What we need what is not need more medication, more medication but more education, more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. This is Exposé coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria, every Monday on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook simultaneously. And I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyami. Don't, don't forget, what we need what is we not need more medication, more medication but more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. In a world swelling with cares, where the ground seems to shift beneath our feet, it's easy to feel lost and overwhelmed. But amidst the turmoil, there's a beacon of strength, a path to a brighter tomorrow. This year, the 5F Conference is back, bigger and better. Join us from Friday, October 4 to Sunday, October 6 for three days of transformative power. Experience inspiring sessions with renowned speakers like Reverend Tony Akiyemi, Reverend Hakim Ogunira, Pastor Mrs. Laide Adeyemo, Mr. Wally Abayomi and Reverend Bayo Asolo. Don't miss out on this life-changing event. Register now at 5fconference.tsfchuck.com and be part of something extra again. Hello and welcome to Expose with Tony Akinyemi. This beautiful Monday evening, I'm honored to always be your host. We're talking about our food and our health. And we started out talking about vegetables, seeds, nuts, before we started moving into the fruit category. Of course, we mentioned the coconut as well as coconut oil. And today we want to start what they used to teach us in our elementary school in Nigeria in those days, A for apple. <laughs> That's where we're starting off from today. So they say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. You know, I think I told the story the other day of uh, two people that were trying to woo a lady. I read that uh, story, I think, uh, on social media. One was a medical doctor, and the other one was another professional. I can't remember the profession right now. And the uh, medical doctor will always bring roses, flowers, to the lady every day as he will be coming back from work will bring roses for the lady and present to her just to win her heart. Meanwhile, the other guy will always bring an apple every day. Whenever he was returning from work, he will bring an apple to offer to the lady to win her heart. Both of them were interested in marrying the lady. And so the lady became curious and asked the man, but why, why do you give me apples every day? The other guy brings me flowers. You bring me apples. And that man mischievously responded and said, don't you know that an apple a day keeps the doctor away? <laughs> the man and the medical doctor were all trying to win this lady. And so the man was bringing an apple every day to keep the doctor away. But of course, it's not in that sense. That that saying goes, a doc, uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. It means that an apple a day can support your health in such a way that you won't really need to see the doctor that often, maybe except for medical checkups and what have you. So what exactly are in the apple that help to keep the doctor away? Now, number one, apples are very high in a particular substance known as pectin. Pectin is a soluble fiber, by the way. Apples hold the chemical constituents needed for the body to cleanse and to release toxins from the digestive tract. Now, this in turn makes it easier for the liver to handle the toxic load during the cleansing process. Okay, now the pectin in apples also uh, can lower your LDL cholesterol, which is considered the bad cholesterol. Now, people who eat two apples a day may actually lower their cholesterol by as much as 16%, according to certain studies. 
Now, um, some people have asked me, what about these uh, apples that are waxed, shining as if there's candle wax on their skin? Well, when we talk about the health benefits of apples, you get them essentially from organic apples. Apples that are not genetically modified, not GMO apples. Apples that are not, you know, sprayed or waxed. Of course, apples have their natural wax on the skin. That's what, what one of the protective layer that God has put there. That one is okay. But uh, people who are in the food industry also sometimes wax artificially or synthetically wax the apple. They spray it with wax to further extend the shelf life as they transport them from one location to another location, particularly internationally, over long distances, so they don't spoil. Now, the apples that have been waxed, again, are not the best for you. That's why some people will suggest that you peel the skin of the apple so you can get rid of the wax before you eat it. But then, the skin of apples, organic apples that have not been waxed, the skin is also a, a warehouse of, you know, phytochemicals, medicinal properties that, that are very useful. Now, French researchers found that a flavonoid that is called florizine, florizine is found only in apples and may protect postmenopausal women from osteoporosis, loss of bone density. It may also increase bone density, as I mean, uh, instead of uh, bone the density of bone going down, it actually can help to boost or strengthen or increase bone density. Um, boron, another trace mineral, is another ingredient that is found in apples and can also help to strengthen bones. One recent study shows that uh, children that are suffering from asthma who drank, you know, uh, freshly made apple juice, not store-bought apple juice, because you can actually buy apples and also buy a juicer, a juice extractor for your kitchen, and you can actually run your apples through your juicer and make fresh apple juice in your own kitchen. So this recent study shows that children that had asthma, asthma and drank, you know, uh, apple juice on a daily basis actually suffered less wheezing than children who, uh, uh, who drank apple juice maybe just once per month or very infrequently. So which means that apple juice can actually help to reduce asthma attacks and respiratory disorders. Another study showed that children that are born to women who eat a lot of apples during pregnancy actually have lower rates of asthma than children whose mothers didn't eat apples at all or ate a few apples while they were pregnant with those children, which means that apples contain substances that can help children not to either develop asthma at all or reduce the uh, severity of their asthma attacks. Now, according to the website of healthdiaries.com, www.healthdiaries.com, Apples may also provide the following health benefits. Number one, it can help to prevent Alzheimer's disease. Now, and I can relate to that in the sense that many scientists are beginning to now link aluminum toxicity to the development of Alzheimer's disease. And so if the pectin in apples can be a detoxifying agent to remove toxic metals, from the body, then it goes, you know, to show that yes, it is very, very likely that it can actually help to prevent Alzheimer's. Now, a study was actually conducted on mice at Cornell University in New York, okay, and it found that uh, a substance that is found in apple and many other fruits is called quercetin. Quercetin. Quercetin, by the way, is also found in onions. It's also found in the garlic. It's present in most alium vegetables. Alium, A-L-L-I-U-M. There's a class of vegetables called alium vegetables. Now, this study that was conducted on mice at Cornell University in New York in the USA 
found that the quercetin that is present in apples may actually protect brain cells from the kind of free radical damage that may lead to Alzheimer's disease. So you can truly see that an apple a day can keep the doctor away. Now, what about lung cancer? According to the website of healthdiaries.com, it also says that apples can actually help to prevent lung cancer. Now, according to a study of 10,000 people, and that's a huge number, 10,000 people that was conducted, those who ate the most apples had a 50% lower risk of developing lung cancer. Again, it goes to correlate and corroborate the fact that there are certain substances in apples that can help to detox the body of uh, toxic substances or carcinogens, cancer-causing agents. Now, researchers believe that this is due also to the high levels of the flavonoids, quercetin, and another one called naringin that is present in apples. So the pectin, the quercetin, the naringin, and many other cofactors present in apples all synergistically collaborate to achieve these ends that we're talking about. Now, what about breast cancer prevention? Again, a study that was carried out at Cornell University in New York found that rats that ate one apple per day reduced their risk of breast cancer by 17%. Rats that were fed three apples per day reduced their risk of breast cancer by 39%. And rats that were fed six apples per day reduced their risk of breast cancer by 44%. So the more, the merrier. The more apples a person eats a day, the higher the benefits as far as breast cancer is concerned, at least in this animal study. What about colon cancer prevention? Now, one study also found that rats that were fed an extract from apple skins actually had a 43% lower risk of colon cancer. Again, that is, in my view, not unconnected with the pectin and the detoxifying effect of pectin and many other agents present in apple. Other research shows that the pectin in apples actually reduces the risk of colon cancer and helps to maintain a healthy digestive tract. What about liver cancer? I mean, research also found that rats that are fed an extract from apple skins had a 57% lower risk of liver cancer. Now, as you can see, it doesn't mean that when you eat an apple, you can never develop uh, lung cancer or breast cancer or colon cancer or liver cancer. It only helps in lowering the risk. And you must get that straight. It helps in lowering the risk, at least in animal studies. And quite often, these things translate to human experience as well. And by the way, you don't need a, a placebo, uh, a blind, uh, double blind placebo control study to know whether you should eat an apple or not. We have all been eating apples from time immemorial. All you need to do is get organic apple, not GMO apple, not commercial apple that has been sprayed and waxed, all right? But get organic apples, and that will serve that purpose for you. Now, this is a good place to go on a short break. When we come back, we continue our food and our health. And we are emphasizing apples to begin with today. And in the second half, we conclude on apples and move on to yet another beautiful fruit that can offer very wonderful health benefits. Don't go away. I'll be back shortly. Hello and welcome. This is the 5F Conference News Desk and I am your anchor Estelle. And I'll be running you through every scope every gist and every insight you need concerning the 5F Conference 2024. And of course, as you already know, 5F Conference stands for Faith, Future, Family, Fitness and Finance. Now we have five amazing, powerful ministers of God and of the Gospel who will be taking us through these three days of impact. 
Now we have our lead pastor, Reverend Tony Akiemi, our national overseer, Pastor Wale Abayomi, Reverend Bayo Asolo, Reverend Hakim Ogunero, and Pastor Mrs. Laide Adeyemo. Now the Five Conference program starts officially on Friday, 4th October, and you can join online via YouTube or Facebook from 6 p.m. And of course, on day two, Saturday 5th October, the program starts at 4 p.m. online on YouTube or Facebook as well. And of course, on the grand finale, Sunday 6th October 2024, you can join us in person at the Shepherd's Flock International Church Worship Terrium at 18 Shogulet Street of Mobelaji Bank, Anthony Way, Ikeja, Lagos by 9 a.m. Or you can join online on Facebook or YouTube. Now joining me of course to bring you more scope and more gist on how ready and geared up we are are our correspondents from different regions. We have our correspondent from Ikeja, from Liverpool and of course from Ikorodu. Hi there, I'm Toby Famuyua reaching you live from the United Kingdom and I am excited and ready for the 5F conference. Are you ready? Hi there, my name is Stella and I am reporting live from TSF Ikorodu. I am super excited and ready for 5F 2024 and I hope that you are ready too. Thank you Esther for that. Here at TSF Ikeja, we are fully prepared and ready to have you guys join us on YouTube and Facebook on Friday 4th of October 2024 for the 5F conference at 6 p.m. and on Saturday at 4 p.m. and we would love to have you here physically on Sunday the 6th of October 2024 by 9 a.m. It promises to be an awesome time and it promises not to leave you the same. It's a 5F conference and your lives will be transformed extraordinarily. We are fully ready and prepared to have you join us. So over to you Hester. Thank you. As you have heard, we all get up, we are all ready, we're ready for the impact, we're ready for the power-packed word coming for each and every one of us. Now that is something you do not want to miss. Do not miss it for anything. You have to set your pen, set your books, and of course, set your heart to receive every word coming at you. Don't miss it. See you soon. Welcome back. This is still Expose with Tony Akiyemi, where we bring wellness information for your well-being, information for your health transformation. For what we need is not more medication, but more education for the best prescription. Of course, it's knowledge. Our theme for this season is your food and your health. And today, we started talking about apples. And we're looking at the benefits that apples can confer. We have looked at certain things in apples like pectin, apple pectin. We've looked at the quercetin in apples and many other phytochemicals found in apples. All right. And we have seen the various animal studies that have been done on the, the effect of apples on various types of cancers and how it can help to reduce our risk of developing those cancers from lung cancer to breast cancer to colon cancer and what have you. Now, what about when it comes to diabetes? Can the diabetic patient also eat apples? Of course. The pectin in apples, you know, supplies a substance that is known as galacturonic acid. Galacturonic acid. When we eat that, that galacturonic acid from apples actually helps to lower the body's needs for insulin. And it can therefore, in a way, help in the management of diabetes. Of course, I have to caution that if you are diabetic, you don't eat too much of apples because that can also maybe shoot up your sugar a little bit. So maybe an apple a day would just be sufficient for diabetic patients. All right? What about weight loss? There was a study done in Brazil. A Brazilian study found that women who ate three apples or pears a day actually lost weight. They lost more weight while dieting than women who did not eat fruits while dieting. Maybe not just apples, maybe fruits in general. 
but apples were used in that particular study. So that's why I'm making particular reference to apples. Now, let's move on to another fruit in this second half of today's conversation on your food and your health. And the second fruit is avocado pear, avocado. Now, the avocado, also known as alligator pear, is a high-fiber, sodium-free, and cholesterol-free food. And it provides nearly 20 essential nutrients, including fiber. Now, just like coconut oil, many people think that, oh, if you eat a lot of avocado, your cholesterol will go up. That's another fa 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 foul. <laughs> avocado does not elevate your cholesterol. It doesn't. Avocado is rich in healthy, monounsaturated, as well as polyunsaturated fats. It contains some amount of omega-3 fatty acids. It contains uh, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, and even some B vitamins like thiamine, like riboflavin, like niacin, like um, biotin, like pantothenic acid, vitamin B12, vitamin B6, even folate. It also contains potassium. These are wonderful minerals and vitamins that the avocado pear brings to the table. Now, foods that are naturally rich in omega-3 fatty acids, such as avocados, are widely acknowledged as the secret to a healthy heart, a brilliant brain, as well as eagle eyes. Okay? Just like my eyes. <laughs> you know, uh, the other day my wife and I were driving uh, down to our house, and there's usually this woman who sells avocado pears, you know, by the roadside when we're going home. I don't know where she gets them from. They are usually very good, good looking, wonderful looking, and, and beautiful. So we, we drove past and we just, bought, uh, we just bought six pieces of, you know, avocado and we took them home. And then two weeks later, we had only one of those six left. We had eaten five of them. And two days later, we were driving, I mean, two weeks later, we were driving past again and we wanted to buy. And then the moment we parked, maybe she found, oh, these people seem to love avocado a lot. She just jacked up the price, you know? I screamed, I said, what? We just bought it two weeks ago here. How come the price is now this? And then she looked at me and said, well, that's how much we bought it in the market. We sell based on how much you, I said, no, 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 no. This, this price can almost not, I mean, the price was almost 50% more than what we bought just two weeks ago. I said, no, I know prices can fluctuate. Things can go up, but not jump this high within 14 days. So I continued to, as we do in Nigeria, I continued to negotiate with her. I said, no, 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 no. And eventually she sold it to me at the price we bought it two weeks before. <laughs> so we bought additional pieces and went home. I think we bought four additional pieces. Avocados are wonderful. Now, according to uh, WebMD, many of us are familiar with WebMD, uh, it says a medium-sized avocado actually contains about 30 grams of fat. And nutritionists are finding that most of the fat in avocado is actually monounsaturated. Don't forget when we're talking about coconut oil, I mentioned uh, polyunsaturated fat and monounsaturated fat when it comes to unsaturated fat. And then when it comes to saturated fat, we have the short chain saturated fat, medium chain saturated fat, and long chain saturated fat. So uh, the, uh, nutritionists are now finding that in avocado, the fat, the fat in avocado, most of it is actually monounsaturated and is the good kind of fat that actually lowers cholesterol, not elevates cholesterol. Now, avocado pears also contain lignin, lignin, L-I-G-N-I-N. It's an insoluble fiber, and that actually helps to lower cholesterol. It binds to cholesterol in the GI tract and helps to flush it out through your poo, -poo. okay? So it actually helps to lower cholesterol. Now, Dr. Daniel G. Amen, many of us are familiar with him. If you go online and just Google Dr. Daniel Amen, is a, a very popular medical doctor that has a number of clinics around the USA, and he's actually a psychiatrist that uses a, a, a cutting-edge technology in brain imaging and dealing with uh, 
brain health as a whole. Now, I, I listen, I've listened to quite a number of his videos, Dr. Daniel Amen, A-M-E-N, Amen, as in when you pray in Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs> right, that's his surname, Dr. Daniel Amen. Now, I listened to many of his videos, and uh, there was one he made a statement that actually, you know, made me to say, yeah, that's true, that's true. He said, almost in every medical specialty, doctors in those specialties have various uh, investigations to look into the specific organ or organ system that they are treating, that they specialize in treating. A cardiologist, for example, we want to do ECG and echo, you know, to look into the heart to see both the structure and the functionality of the heart. Okay? Somebody who is an um, uh, orthopedic surgeon, we want to do x-rays to look at the skeletal structure to know where things are wrong and how to fix it. Okay? He says, I mean, different specialties. They will do blood tests, urine tests. They will do stool tests. They will do imaging tests, radiological investigations. He says psychiatry is the only specialty where the doctor typically doesn't look into the organ that he's treating, doesn't look into the brain to treat the brain. So he started developing imaging techniques such as SPECT and QEEG, different imaging techniques to actually look into the brain and know where there are you know, imbalances and what have you, and then treat it either using nutritional therapy or pharmaceutical drugs or various other therapies and protocols. That's Dr. Daniel Jill Amen, by the way. Now, he is a clinical neuroscientist, a psychiatrist, a brain imaging expert, and an author of the New York Times uh, bestseller, Change Your Brain. Okay, now, he says, change your brain, change your life. He counts avocados as one of the top brain healthy foods that can help to prevent Alzheimer's disease. And that's not only because of avocado's omega-3 fatty acid content, but also because of its uh, folate content. Many people call that folic acid, folate, all right, and vitamin E content. That's what Dr. Daniel G. Amen, who is a brain expert, talks about. He's a neuroscientist, clinical neuroscientist, he's a psychiatrist, he's a brain imaging expert. Now, the virtues of the avocado are too numerous for me to exhaust in this uh, very short episode. <laughs> anyway, short is relative. We normally try to keep expose within 30 and 40 minutes thereabout, not more than that. So that's not sufficient time for me to you know, enumerate all the numerous benefits of avocado pear. But here are just a few uh, more health benefits that the nutritional profile of avocados can provide for us. One, the monounsaturated fats that help to control triglycerides in the bloodstream and lower cholesterol as well as control diabetes are present in avocado. There's also oleic acid and potassium. Both of these nutrients help in lowering cholesterol as well and reducing the risk of high blood pressure. Now, the folate that promotes healthy cell and tissue development uh, also, it's also present in avocado. Folate is also essential for metabolism, uh, the metabolism of um, homocysteine. And this helps to maintain normal levels of homocysteine, which is an amino acid. I, I alluded to that in an earlier episode that homocysteine is what oxidizes cholesterol and converts cholesterol to oxycholesterol or oxidized cholesterol. And oxycholesterol is the deadly cholesterol that causes all the problems associated with cholesterol. As long as cholesterol is not oxidized, it's not dangerous. Actually, it's a vital nutrient and it performs vital functions in the body. That is cholesterol. But you see, when you eat avocado regularly, avocado will now provide the amino acid homocysteine and that homocysteine now helps to maintain normal levels the folate, rather, in the avocado helps to maintain normal levels of homocysteine in the body because folate is one of the cofactors needed to convert homocysteine, an amino acid, into two super antioxidants. Okay? Those antioxidants are um, SAMe, S-adenosyl methionine, and glutathione, 
you need homocysteine to make glutathione, and you need folate as an additional ingredient, among other ingredients, to convert homocysteine to glutathione. So avocado will furnish your body with that folate to help in the conversion of homocysteine to glutathione so the homocysteine does not oxidize the cholesterol in your body. Now, avocados also contain lutein, which is a carotenoid, and this protects against cataracts in the eyes and certain types of, certain types of cancer, and it reduces uh, the risk of age-related macular degeneration. Now, which is the leading cause of blindness in adults that are 65 years or older. Avocados also contain three or more times as much lutein as you can find in other common vegetables and fruits. So it's a very rich source of lutein. Now, the avocado has been called the world's most perfect food because it has achieved this distinction uh, through its many benefits uh, and, and many nutritionists claim it you know, uh, 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 to be one thing that everybody must add to their diet. And it not only, avocado not only contains everything a person needs to survive, it has also been found to contribute actually to the prevention and control, like I mentioned earlier, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and other health conditions. So avocado also helps in hormonal balancing. When women come see me, for example, in my office, and we run tests on them, we do their hormonal assay, and we see that, oh, they have hyperprolectinemia, oh, they have a high estrogen, estrogen dominance, oh, low progesterone, or high this, high low that. When there is hormonal imbalance, I normally give them a recipe to make their smoothie, and avocado is one of the ingredients in that recipe, okay? Because it helps in addressing hormonal imbalance. It therefore helps to improve a woman's fertility potential because hormonal imbalance is one of the causes of infertility. In fact, the architecture of the avocado pear, the shape is exactly like the shape of the uterus, the womb of a woman. Now, moreover, the avo avocado is also always pregnant with a baby, <laughs> by the way, in its womb. Anytime you slice an avocado across, you see a baby in the womb. The shape of the avocado looks like the womb, and it's always pregnant. And that's one of the signatures of God in nature to point to us that avocado may enhance fertility. So what further proof do we need that the avocado is actually a fertility food, particularly for women? And one of the ways it enhances fertility is in helping them to balance their sex hormones, their estrogen, their progesterone, their luteinizing hormone, their follicle stimulating hormone, you know, and prolactin and all of that. Now, the US government recently revised its official nutrition guidelines to urge Americans to eat more avocados. So if you didn't like avocado before, this is a good time to start rethinking your choices and your preferences. Some have told me that, well, I, I don't know. I, I, when I eat avocado, I feel like vomiting. I don't like it. Well, if it's good, if it's indicated for your particular condition, then find a way around it. And one of the ways around it, if you can't eat it directly, is to blend it into your smoothie. A smoothie recipe can be for you to put coconut milk or avocado, I mean, sorry, tiger nut milk in your, uh, or almond milk, any nut milk for that matter, in your blender. Then you can put half an avocado. Of course, you peel the skin and remove the seed. By the way, the seed of avocado is also very useful. I mean, people dry the seed and grind it into powder and they use it in different ways to address different conditions some even claim it helps in normalizing uh, blood pressure all right avocado seed that is the seed itself has medicinal properties but the pulp the flesh is also very medicinal the only one i don't know anything about yet is the skin whether the skin is also useful but i know that if research is done we might find that there may be some application for the skin as well but i don't know for now about that okay so you can put any nut milk in your blender tiger nut milk coconut milk almond milk hazelnut milk hemp seed milk whatever that's your base and then you now put you peel your avocado half an avocado you put it inside you throw in some bananas you throw in some berries just blend everything together. Wow, yummy. That's a very wonderful way to, you won't even feel the taste of the avocado, let alone feeling nauseous or like, oh, when I eat avocado, I like to vomit. Another way I eat avocado is to mash it, mash it, and it becomes like butter. And if you have your whole grain bread, you can actually smash it on the surface like you rub butter 
or you can build your salad. So, uh, I mean, sorry, your 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 uh, boga rather. You can build your boga with avocado instead of uh, margarine and uh, things like that. You can also cut avocado pear into cubes and just add it to your salad, vegetable salad, and eat it that way. I mean, a thousand and one ways. Some people make, I think they call it, uh, uh, is it guacamole <laughs> that they call it now? I think it's a Mexican dip, all right, that they use in eating uh, stuff like that. I'm not very familiar with uh, that, that uh, cuisine, but avocado is used in different cultures for different things. So find different ways to smuggle in avocado pear into your daily dietary fare, and then you can derive all these benefits that we've talked about. When we come back next week, by the special grace of God, we'll be talking about other fruits that also serve as, you know, health foods that we can intelligently incorporate into our diet. Don't forget what we need is not more medication, but more education for the best prescription is knowledge. Thank you once again for spending your evening with me, or any time for that matter that you're watching this. And don't forget to share this with your friends, your colleagues, and your family members to bless them. And I also invite you to visit my website again, www.tonyakinyemi.com. And please patronize us by purchasing some of the resource materials available at our website, books and newsletters. Some of them are free. Some of them you have to pay a little token to be able to own them. God bless you. In a world swelling with cares, where the ground seems to shift beneath our feet, it's easy to feel lost and overwhelmed. But amidst the turmoil, there's a beacon of strength, a path to a brighter tomorrow. This year, the 5F Conference is back, bigger and better. Join us from Friday, October 4 to Sunday, October 6 for three days of transformative power. Experience inspiring sessions with renowned speakers like Rev. Tony Akinyemi, Rev. Hakim Ogunira, Pastor Mrs. Laide Adeyemo, Mr. Wally Abayomi, and Rev. Bayo Asolo. Don't miss out on this life changing event. Register now at 5 and be part of something extra. Again.